Okay, good evening, Matrix, and welcome back. This is going to be our last session together on sequences and series. And then from next week, you're going to be joining Katlejo and I. We're going to be talking about geometry and grade 11 geometry and, yeah, the grade 12 stuff as well, obviously. So, yeah, we're just going to wrap up tonight with um, some exam questions. So these are questions that I have found in previous NSC exams. Some of them <clears throat> are from the November papers and some of them are from supplementary papers, but they're all um, accessible to you on the Departments of Education's website. Um, so if you do want to go and have a look there as well, there's lots and lots and lots of practice. And they also, the department also put all the memos online as well. So, you know, the idea is, is that you, you sort of would try the questions first yourself and then afterwards you could go and mark it and, and see what the marks are allocated to and what you would get marks for, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's get underway. Um, I'm going to get started on the first question here. And the first one that I found is this one over here, which says the sum to infinity of a convergent geometric series is 13 and a half. The sum to infinity of the same series calculated from the third term onwards is 1, 5. If r is greater than 0, determine the value of r. Okay, so <clears throat> we know that they want us to calculate r. We know that that's the cont, uh, common ratio. Um, and they've given us two pieces of information. So when they've given us two pieces of information and they've told us to, to calculate the value of something, what method do you think they want us to use? Like how do you think they want us to do this? What would be, what are we sort of looking to use in order to be able to solve this problem, first of all? Anybody got any ideas? Okay, see a timber go for it. What do you think? Do you want to try and put it like in sigma notation first and then? You could, you could. Maybe I, um, that's not what I'm getting at. I'm, I'm asking you, um, <laughs> rather than, than sigma notation, there's a sort of a specific method that you're going to have to use in order to be able to do this. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm after. You're going to have to create something. Maybe it's 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 even a little simpler than you than you think. I mean, if, if they've asked you to calculate the value of a variable, you need to create an. Go for it, Sia Teva. Is it a simultaneous equation? Exactly. Oh. Exactly. That's exactly. So, what you were going to say? Yes, I was going to say okay. simultaneous. Simultaneous. Okay, exactly. So we, we read this and we recognize straight away that we need to solve this simultaneously. All right. So now that we know that, we know that we need to make two equations from the information that has been given to us. And both of them have to have an R in them. Let me just move this down so that we've got a little bit more space to write. There we go. And go up again. So both of them have to have an R in them. So now going back to some of the skills that we were practicing on Tuesday when we were together, I want you to tell me how I'm going to write, using my formulae, how am I going to write the sum to infinity is 13,5. How am I going to write that? <clears throat> Anyone got any ideas? How am I going to write the sum to infinity is 13,5 using my formulae? Ma'am, wouldn't you write it 13.5 equals to A over 1 minus R? Lovely. Lovely, Jamie. Well done. Okay, spot on. Good. Very nice. So that's how we're going to write the first bit of information. Sum to infinity is 13.5. And that essentially is our first equation. Obviously, we don't want to work with it with 1 minus r in the denominator, but let's just leave it for now and let's establish our second equation. So our second equation has to come from this bit of information here. The sum to infinity of the same series calculated from the third term onwards is one and a half. What are they telling us when they say that? What does that mean? 
Anyone got any ideas? So in other words, from, from the third term onwards, the total sum is 1.5. What would we need to add to that 1.5 in order to get the total sum to infinity? Let me ask you it like that. What would I have to add to one comma five in order to in order to get the sum to infinity. Let's see what's going on in the chat. N equals three. Talia, why are you? I'm afraid I don't understand, Talia. Why are you saying n equals three and then minus one? Jamie, you're on the right track, but I don't think anybody else has realized why yet. Talia, where does that come from? Where does um, minus three and then add one come from? Can you tell me? Not sure, okay. All right, so if this is a little bit of a difficult one for you, let me assist you guys with this, all right? What they are saying is this, all right? There is a particular value. If we add 1 comma 5 to that, we're going to end up with 13 comma 5, which is our sum to infinity, right? Yeah, so it now is it is 12. Okay, fine, fair enough. It is 12. But what does that 12 represent? What does that 12 mean? Now that we know, so now you've, great, you've got and you've said 13 minus 5 minus one comma five is 12. What are you gonna do with this 12? What does this 12 mean to us? What does 12 mm -hmm. represent? The ratio. It's the? Ratio. The ratio. So if oh. it's, if it's mm -hmm. just read, read again carefully guys. It says uh, the sum to infinity of the same series calculated from the third term onwards. So from the third term onwards, what about the first and the second terms? Anyone got any idea now? 12 is the first term, unfortunately not Farron. Unfortunately not. 12 is the sum. There we go, Tobile. Isn't 12 the sum of the first two terms? Bingo. You got it. All right. 12 is the sum of the first two terms. Beautiful. All right. I'm so glad I didn't tell you and that you've been able to tell me. That's excellent. Okay. So now, Tobile, we need to turn that into an equation. The sum of the first two terms is 12. How are we going to write that? How are we going to write the sum of the first two terms is 12 matrix? Remember, we're talking about converging geometric series. How do I write the first term of any pattern? I write it as? You guys are so quiet tonight. How do I write the first term of any pattern? I write it as A, 100% Talia, lovely, thank you. Good stuff. And how am I gonna write the second term of a geometric series? AR. Beautiful, beautiful, good. All right, and now the second one is AR. Good, yes, lovely. So the sum of the first two terms, in other words, A plus AR is 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, in my opinion, I don't know if this helps you or not, but this is what I always do when I'm problem solving, is I always ask myself when they tell me something, what does this mean? What does it mean? So we started off by saying, okay, well, we've got to take one and a half away from 13 comma five. But the result that we get 
what does it mean for us? What, did, what does it represent in terms of the information that they've given us? And Tabila, you were brilliant when you said it, it must be the sum of the first two terms. Okay, so now if we start thinking to ourselves, okay, the sum of the first two terms is 12. What does that mean? How am I going to write that? Well, I know that the series is geometric, and I know that I write the first term as A, and I write the second term as AR. So therefore, A plus AR is 12. Okay, so it was a little bit more difficult in this question to form that second simultaneous equation. All right, we first had to um, discover what the sum of the first two terms were before we could actually make the equation ourselves. All right, let's see, someone's got... Oh, um, yes, with pleasure. So um, when we're working with a geometric series, all right, we've got a common ratio. So for any geometric series, Term one, as for any arithmetic series, term one is always A. So term two is always AR. And term three is AR squared. So remember, this comes from our nth term. Okay, so if we now go and we find TN, it comes from AR to the N minus one. Okay, so that's how I'm writing term one and term two. Uh, that was... Zoom user, and Tebocheng, is that you? All right, so that's how we got that. All right, so now we need to go and solve simultaneously. What I would recommend in a situation like this is that if you've got a denominator like we do in the purple equation, get rid of the denominator, all right? So in this situation over here, I think it's gonna make sense for us to cross multiply. All right, so let me do that first of all. So 1 minus r times 13 comma 5 leaves me with 13 comma 5 minus 13 comma 5 r is equal to a. Okay, now what do you think we should do? Matrix, how would we, how would we go about solving the orange and the green equation simultaneously? What do you think we should do from here? Go for it, Siatemba. Wouldn't um, you first try and simplify one of those equations and turn it into equation three, and then you put take uh, equation three and put it into like equation one or something like that? Absolutely. So you so what you want to do is you want to substitute. Yes. Hundred percent. Okay. So what what do you think I should do now? I've got rid of the denominator, so I actually have made a third equation. What do you think I should do with the orange equation, if anything? Someone else has put their hand up, but I don't know who. Uh, Katleho, who's got their hands up? Um, Emily and Siatemba. Okay, so Emily, go for it. Okay, um, so what I think we should do is take 13.5 minus 13.5 R equals to A and put it in equation two to solve for R. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so if, if I just leave that as equation number three over here, all right, so if I now want to take equation number two, and I want to substitute it into equation number three, how am I going to do that? I think we should do the other way around, like sub equation three, equation two. You want to sub equation number three into equation number one. You want to do it the other way. All right, we can do it like that. How, Andile, that was your suggestion. So Andile says, let's rather go this way. Do you think it really matters, Matrix? No. No, no. quite right, Emily. Doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right. Ma ma a, a, yes, go for it. Ma'am, I have a question. Okay. Um, Ooh, nice. Since we had equation one, right? Mm -hmm. And supposedly turned it into equation three. But wouldn't, yes. wouldn't equation three still be equation one? And yes. wouldn't you make equation two and turn it into equation three and simplify equation two into three and then substitute three into two? 
Absolutely, Sia Temba. So what's important when you're solving simultaneously is that if you rearrange one of the equations, you've got to go and then sub into the other equation. So I can't sub three into one because three is one. So I'm going to end up with zero equals zero. All right. So either I can rearrange two and sub it into one, or I can rearrange one and sub it into two. Okay, but as long as I sub into the other equation, I'm fine. Now, everybody have a look what's going on in the chat. All right. Um, exactly. Zoom user, if that's you in trouble, then you're quite right. But look at what Nandi said, everybody. All right. Her suggestion was yes, yes. We've got to use substitution, Talia. Okay. Um, Yes, we're going to have to use substitution in, in this particular case. All right, sometimes if you're working with two arithmetic equations, then you can do uh, elimination. Um, but here we're going to have to work with, with substitution. I just love what Nandi said, because that just, for me, um, shows a lot of insight into how to equate equation two and what's now equation three together. So Nandi, well done. Can you see everybody else? Nandi has said, let's factorize. So she's taken A out of the left-hand side. She's got one plus R in brackets. And she said, let that be equal to 12. Now, the only thing that Nandi didn't say was that in order to get A on its own, we would need to divide both sides by? One plus R. Beautiful. Okay. And now, that's why I love this so much, because here we've got our A, we've got A in terms of R, and here's our A over there. So now we can take our 12 plus R and we can go and sub it in over here. Okay. So well done to you, Nandi. That was a, a very, very nice suggestion. Okay. Minus 13 comma 5 R. And then that's going to be equal to what A is equal to in terms of R, which is 12 over one plus. Okay, lovely. So now we're doing what? Hang on a second. Oh, it was in Tabo I think. If I'm wrong, tell me. Um, now we've got one unknown. Okay, we can't solve for two unknowns in one equation. Now we've only got one unknown in our equation. So now what, Matrix? Now what do we do? Any ideas? Yes, Timber, what do you think? Ma'am, what I would do is I would mm -hmm. take, uh, since we have, oh yeah, I would have done it differently, actually. Okay. I would have done it differently. What I would have done, you see, we, we have equation two and we have equation three, right? So I think, uh -huh. um, since we have A, I'm confused now, I would have done it completely differently from what you did. From the beginning. Okay. But that, there's nothing wrong with that, Sia Timber. There are so many different ways to solve simultaneously. Absolutely. So, I mean, we could probably yeah. sit here the whole evening and just talk about different ways that we could, we could actually solve this particular equation. The reason why I'm choosing to do it like this is because you could also work in terms of A, but there'd be no point of that because they asked us to work out what R was. So that's why it was nice to make A the subject of the formula and sub into an equation and get rid of the A and only work in terms of R. Right, we could, but, we could, hmm? but wouldn't we, we, okay, let's say we use that, we use substitution and we, we find A, but wouldn't we use A to find R at the end, even though it's a longer process? It might you, can. Be, yeah. you can see a timber, you can if you want to. The only thing is, is that if you're going to do extra work, all right, it's going to slow you down significantly. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. Um, because obviously you know that time is chasing you when you're writing your exam. For every mark that you write, you must your, your amount of time is one comma two. All right, so in other words, if something is out of 50, you've got 60 minutes. You know, if a question is out of five, how long are you allowed to spend on it? Okay, if a question's out of six, Yes, Njibulo. Yes, Talia. Okay, so everybody, the suggestions that you're making. All right, so if a question was out of five, that means you could spend six minutes on it. So it's just a little bit um, over a mark a minute. 
All right, so yeah, you can do that if you want to see a timber, but just be careful of your time. All right, so yes, we were saying, wouldn't we cross multiply? Again, absolutely we would, or we could multiply every term in the equation by one plus r. Uh, in this case over here, it's not gonna make any difference. What we can do is we can multiply uh, 13 comma five minus 13 comma five r with, 1 plus r, that's us cross, cross multiplying and it's equal to 12. Okay, so let's get rid of the brackets. That leaves us with 13 comma 5, so f, o, so plus 13 comma 5 r minus 13 comma 5 r minus 13 comma 5 r squared. I'm going to bring the 12 over because this is quadratic and I'm going to make it equal to zero. All right, so I've got a couple of terms here that are going to add up to zero. Yeah, please, if you've got questions, ask Katlejo. She's an amazing mathematician. And of course, if you see me do anything silly, then please point it out to me. Okay, so uh, this one over here and that one over there add up to zero. So I'm gonna leave them out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my minus 13 comma five R squared to the front. And then I've got minus 12 plus 13 comma five. So that would give me plus one comma five equals zero. Okay, now there's a couple of ways in which we could do this particular question, but I think the easiest thing for us to do actually is solve it like this. Okay, let's leave negative 13 comma 5 r squared on the left and let's take the 1 comma 5 over to the other side. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 13, negative 13 comma 5. So everybody, we're going to take negative 1 comma 5 and we're going to divide it by negative 13.5. What do we end up with as an answer? Anyone got an answer? 0 0.11, so. That's not what I got, Emily, unless I'm wrong. I didn't, I didn't get that. Oh, I know what you did, Emily. You pressed the SD button, didn't you? I did. Okay, okay. Okay, now don't, don't. Look, Talia's done the same thing. Don't, guys, don't press the SD button. I know we, we, want, to, we want to understand what this number is, but it's actually, there we go, Tundleware. So it's a beautiful, beautiful nine. fraction. Okay, it's one over nine, lovely. Okay, now in this form, having it as one over nine makes much more sense to us than zero comma one recurring, even though that's technically, it's not wrong. All right, so r squared equals one over nine. Now one over nine is a perfect square, isn't it, Matrix? Okay, it's a perfect square in the same way that nine is a perfect square. All right, so what this means for us is this. In order to work out r, we are gonna have to take the square root of one over nine. This is super, super important. Remember matrix, when you are solving for any exponent, that's even. So r squared or r to the power of four, or r to the power of six, remember your answer could be positive or negative, right? Now in this particular situation, yes, Talia, that's great. Plus or minus one third. So r is equal to a third or r is equal to a negative third. And what this question wants from us, remember, remember, when we go back to the beginning, okay, let's just highlight this first. They said to us, for this particular question, okay, for this particular question, R had to be positive. So that was a restriction that was placed by the question, okay? That's why we're going to disregard the negative answer. We wouldn't just disregard the negative answer because it doesn't make any sense. Okay, it's just because this question told us that R needed to be positive. Okay, so our last step here, guys, would be to go back and put a line through our equal sign. Correct, correct, Talia. 
That's fine, Benedict. There's definitely more than one way to do this question. As long as you got the same answer, then it, it, you were probably on the right track. I suppose that's one of the sort of shortcomings of doing this online. You know, I would love to be able to see what you've written, um, but unfortunately I can't. Okay, but well done for doing it your own way, Benedict. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's so many different ways in which to solve simultaneously. So no problem. Does that make sense, everybody? Is, are you happy with that? Yes, ma'am. All right. So let's move on. And let's have a look at the next question. So again, I'm just going to pull these down so that we've got space to write. Uh, and this is meant to be an easier question. So you can see it's out of four, also filched from one of the year-end papers. And they tell us that 7xy and minus 11 is an arithmetic sequence. They want us to determine the values of x and y. Okay, so Matrix, over to you. Where do we start? What do you think we should do? I can't see. There's hands up. Who's got it's hands up? Andile and Siatemba. Okay. Andile, go for it. Uh, I think you should take, uh, because it's arithmetic, you'll say x minus 7 and equate it to y minus x. I agree with you. All right, lovely. Okay, so Andile, explain to us what you're doing there. What rule are you using? What concept are you using to create that equation? Well, because it's an arithmetic sequence, uh -huh. x minus 7 should be equal to y minus x because they told us that it's arithmetic. Exactly. So you're working on the idea that term 3 minus term 2 is term 2 minus... Two, one, one. Beautiful. Okay. Nice. Good job. All right. So that's one equation we can make. What's another equation that we could make? Or do we need to make another equation? How are we going to solve uh, for X and Y? Somebody else? What else could we do here? Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. It's okay, Njibulo. It's again, it's, it's a lot of the time when it comes to problem solving. And they're asking you to work out the value of a letter or letters. They want you to solve simultaneously. Okay. All right. So I'm dropping massive big hints. Oh, what does Lebohang say? Lebohang says, take X to one side and Y is on one side. Lovely. I like that level, Khan. We could definitely do that. So what we can do for this first equation is we can take this x over here over to the other side. And then that means we've got something in terms of just y. So I'm going to add x, add x. So that would give me 2x minus 7. I love it, level, Khan. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, maybe make x equal to 7. But is term, but mache, is term 2 always going to be equal to term one? Not necessarily. I mean, in, a, in an arithmetic pattern, the difference is going to be the same. So chances are x isn't going to be seven. Okay, use y and sub back in. Fine, they will hang into what? What are we going to sub back into? I agree with you, but what are we subbing into? Uh, I think it should get a second equation. Uh, I don't uh -huh. know if I don't know if the second equation could be y minus x equals uh, minus 11 minus y. Beautiful. And Dile, you are on fire tonight. That is amazing. Cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Great. And now what are we going to do, Andile? Uh, I think you could sub the, the third equation that you made for the one that you made. Then take uh, equation three and sub it to equation two. Absolutely. So what we can do is we can take what y is equal to, which is 2x minus 7, and we can replace this y and this y over here. Okay. Or if you wanted to, you could make y the subject to the formula and then equate the two things that you get as a result of y. 
Th there are so many ways in which we can solve simultaneously. All right, so if you want to do it by elimination, you can do it by elimination. If you want to do it by substitution, you can do it by substitution. Um, I think what I would probably do at this point over here is just go ahead and go and substitute. So in place of this y over here, I'm going to write 2x minus 7. Then I'm going to bring down my minus x equals minus 11 minus, and then in place of my y, I'm going to use brackets, and then I'm going to put in that 2x minus 7. So important, okay, to put in those brackets. Why do I have to have the brackets there? Ma'am, because it affects the signs. Exactly, Lissetti. Beautifully said. Okay, so when we are subtracting anything more than a monomial, so a binomial or a trinomial, we have to have brackets because it is going to affect the signs. Fantastic. All right, so we're feeling good about this. We think we're on the right track. Let's put some pink in our lives. Okay, so now what we want to do is get rid of those brackets. 2x minus 7 minus x is negative 11 minus 2x plus 7. Right. So now we want to get all our x's. Can you see it's the same idea coming through, guys? So we're solving in terms of one letter. We're using two equations and we're solving in terms of one letter first, and then we can work out what the other one is afterwards. All right, so I'm going to put my 2x and my minus x there, and then I'm going to bring this 2x across. And then I'm going to bring down my minus 11 and my plus 7, and I'm going to add another 7. Okay, so this leaves me with 3x. Right, and if I have 14 and I take away 11, that's going to leave me with 3. Okay, and now I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and that means that x is equal to 1. Awesome. All right, so now all I need to do, matrix, is go and work out the value of y, and I'm going to use this equation over here, because y is already the subject to the formula. So y is 2 times, sub in the value of x that you calculated, minus 7. So y has to be equal to negative 5. All right, so for this, I get y is 1 and, sorry, x is 1 and y is minus 5. Do you think that's quite easy? Yes, ma'am. Quite easy. Thanks, Ntabokheng. And the rest of you, what do you think? Do you think that's quite an easy question? So if we saw that in an exam, we'd be able to get that right. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, ma'am, if, we if they told us that it was, uh, if they gave us maybe a, a geometric, we uh -huh. would use the same concept that we just dividing and not subtracting. Correct. Around. Correct, correct, Adile. So when it comes to um, geometric sequences, we have to use, the, that's why we, I was talking to you in the beginning and saying to you, what concept are you using? It's so important because it was arithmetic. You were saying, well, term three minus term two is the same as term two minus term one. That's not true of a geometric sequence. So there we have to work on the R principle. Not that it's called that, but, you know, term three divided by term two is term two divided by term one. Absolutely. Okay. Let's have, and we're going to talk about uh, a geometric sequence now. Let's have a look at this question. All right. So also taken from a past paper. And for those of you who were in the advanced lesson last week on Thursday, I had spoken about um, working with an inequality. And that's why I decided to include this question today to show you that these sorts of questions do actually come up in the NSC exam. And that's why I had chosen to do that with you in the uh, advanced class. Okay, so let's have a look at this. The first three terms of an arithmetic sequence are 2p plus 3, p plus 6, and p minus 2, right? First thing that they tell us is show that P equals 11. How are we going to do that? How am I going to show that P equals 11? Go for it, Siatemba. Wouldn't you sub, P, sub 11 into P, and then when you do that, you find the common the, the difference, and then you use the difference to figure out, or am I wrong? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I'm not wrong. <laughs> Is it, it's see a temper. You know what? I think it's amazing that you are always willing to put your hand in the air and discuss and engage. And so what if you're wrong? We all make mistakes. Um, no, no, no one's here to judge you. We're just sharing ideas here. Now, 
What did the rest of you think of Sia Temba's idea? What do you think would happen if we subbed in the 11? Do you think that would be okay? What do the rest uh, of you think? No, uh, no. Because that's what we're actually trying to find. Absolutely. So what I think is that we could probably try by finding D first. So say P plus six minus two P plus three. Um, yeah. Keep going. That's beautiful. That's and wonderful. then so we know that. Sorry, sorry, ma'am. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, okay. And then we know that A is two P plus three because that's the first term. So yeah, let's just first find D. Then we'll go on. Absolutely. I couldn't have said that better. 100%. So, so what's important to remember with these sorts of questions, and clearly your teachers at school have done some great work with you guys, um, is that when you see a question that says, show that, whether you are working in sequences and series, analytical geometry, anywhere in maths, calculus, it doesn't matter what they do with you this year. When they say show that, you have to pretend that you don't know what the answer is. It's like you don't know that P is equal to 11. That's what you are trying to calculate. All right, Talia, you've got a hand in the air. Go for it. Okay, I think we we'll use the T2 minus T1. And then same applies to the, the other side, which would be T3 minus T2. And then we'll be able to solve for P and then find out if P is 11. Exactly. Exactly. Beautifully put. All right. 100%. That's exactly what we're going to do. All right. So <clears throat> let's do exactly what you've suggested. Let's go P minus 2 minus, and again, I must use brackets matrix, P plus 6. So that's term 3 minus term 2 is term two minus term one. Okay, so when they say show that P is equal to 11, there is definitely going to be a mark on this line. There's not gonna be a mark for the answer. And then I think that the next line, so this would be using the concept, using the principle, showing that you know that that's true. And I think the next mark would be for simplifying. All right, so this would be P minus two minus P minus six. And this gives us P plus 6 minus 2P minus 3. Let's collect our P's one side. All right, so those P's are going to add up to 0. Um, P minus 2P, so that would be minus P plus 2P. I'm just changing the signs. And then I'm going to bring down the 6. I'm going to bring down the minus 3. I'm going to bring across the 2. And I'm going to bring across the 6. So this leaves me with just P on the left-hand side, and then 6 plus 6 is 12, and 12 minus 3 is 9, and 9 plus 2 is 11. 11. Hmm? Are you happy with that? Okay, so that's how we have shown that P equals 11. We basically proved it. Okay, so Yunela, I loved what you said, where you said we, we must start out pretending like we, we don't know yet that P is equal to 11. That's perfect. Okay, good job. All right, next question, guys. Now we need to calculate the smallest value of n for which Tn is smaller than 50, minus 55. Okay, so now what do you think we should do? Any ideas? Uh, substitute to get the equation, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. But what am I going to? What am I going to substitute? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what you think? I was going to substitute uh, p in the eleven into the uh, arithmetic sequence, ma'am. Okay. All right. So you want to start by doing that. Fine. So in other words, you want to work out the value of term one. All right, so term one is going to be two times 11 plus three. So that gives us 25, am I correct? Please, if I make any mistakes, you guys must tell me. Uh, P plus six, sorry, I should have just subbed the 11 and I'm being silly. Okay, so oh, 11 plus six, that leaves us with 17. Term three is going to be P minus two. So this is 11 minus two, which is nine. Okay, so there we go. Those are the first three terms of our pattern. All right, so we know that A is 25. 
We know what uh, D is in this particular case, because we can say term two minus term one or term three minus term two. Okay, so what is D equal to? Minus eight. Negative eight. Negative eight, lovely. Okay, and we can see that because our terms are getting smaller. All right, beautiful. Now, the reason that we wanted to work out what A and D are is because we need to use the nth term. What's the nth term? How do I write the nth term for a arithmetic sequence? What's the formula that I must use? Can you remember? Tn is equal to a plus brackets n minus one, close brackets and d. Beautiful Tabile, thank you so much. Right, lovely, lovely, lovely. But now they've told me that Tn has to be smaller than negative 55. So how am I going to rewrite my equation with the smaller than negative 55? How should I write that? Anyone want to tell me what you think I should write? Okay, so Tn has to be smaller than negative 55. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to change this over here. All right, so if Tn is A plus, oh, hang on a second, someone said something in the chat. Oh. A plus N minus 1 D, I now want to solve for N when this Tn is smaller than negative 55. Can you see how it's becoming an inequality matrix? Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Do you understand why I've done that? Yes, ma'am. Sure? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Tobile. All right, so all I need to do now is go and substitute. All right, so in place of A, I want to put in 25. Beautiful. And in place of D, I want to put in negative 8. Negative 8. Now, this is something that a lot of matrix do, like that. And why could I potentially go wrong here? Because D has to be multiplied by the bracket. Okay, so it's always a good idea to put your D in brackets to remind you that you have to multiply by N and by minus one. It's not a separate term. It's a factor that's being multiplied. Okay, so just be careful of that. That's a, a place where a lot of matrix end up going wrong. All right, so let's get rid of the brackets and let's get our inequality into a form where we can now solve this. All right, so bringing it down to the next line, let me just go up a little bit. We've now got 25 minus eight times N is minus eight N. Minus eight times minus one is plus eight. And then over here, I've got minus 55. Right, so this is not a quadratic inequality. This is a linear inequality. And the first time that you would have encountered linear inequalities matrix would have been back in grade 10, all right. Or maybe even in grade nine. I remember many, many years ago, I used to teach in grade nine, but we don't seem to do that anymore. We seem to teach in grade 10. But anyway, so a long time ago is the first time that you saw this. What we want to do is we want to leave the n terms on, or the n terms on one side of the inequality. And we want to take the number terms over to the other side. So in other words, I'm going to leave minus 8n on the left. And on the right, I want to collect my numbers together. Okay, so that means I'm going to take away 25 and I'm going to take away 8. All right, so that means that minus 8n is going to be smaller than, now I've got to work out what that's going to be. So minus 55, minus 25, minus 8. Minus 8. Ma'am? Yes? Um, for my equation, um, 
Uh, you see the 25, um, I collected the items, right? So huh? I was uh, 25 and uh, added up with 8 and it turned to huh? 33. Yes. Then I placed my, my answer down. Then I said, um, I put the greater sign. Then I said negative 55. Then, uh -huh. I, then, I, then I moved negative 8 in. Then, I, then this one, then I transferred my 33. Then to the other side uh, and uh, I calculated and it's equal to 83, uh, 88. That's, that's okay. fine, that's fine. That's, there's, no, there's no problem with that at all. So, but I just want, there's one thing that I will point out to you. So in other words, what you're telling me you've done is this. So you've taken that minus eight N, whoopsie daisy, and you've brought it over to the right-hand side. And then you've got this, and then you've got your 88 like that. Is that right? Is that, if I'm understanding you correctly? Ma'am, I collect from uh like okay, let's go to the second step, right? It's 25 yes. minus eight and plus eight, right? And yes. then there's, there's, there's the greater sign, then it's negative fifty-five, right? So I collected the light terms from the side and then I said twenty-five plus eight. Then in my answer was um negative. Yes. Then my answer was negative. Um my answer was yeah, it was positive thirty-three, right? Yes. So I and then, then when I place my, uh, my, my, yeah, I do like that. Is it like then this? It okay. Years, and then I transferred my 33 that side and it became negative 33. Okay, lovely. Yeah, that's what I lovely. did. Lovely. That's perfect. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. You haven't done anything wrong. It's exactly the same as what I've done. All you've done that I didn't do is you combined like terms together first. And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. We're going to end up with the same answer. Okay. So yes, you are more than welcome to do that. All right. Good job. So we would have then ended up with, okay, our negative eight in on this side. And on this side, we would have ended up with our Negative 88. Okay. Now what do we need to do, Matrix? Don't you divide both sides by negative 8? Exactly. All right. Then so change the, go for it. Then change the inequality sign because you're dividing with by negative. You change the inequality sign. Exactly. By negative exactly. Exactly. That's wonderful. Well done. Okay. You guys are amazing. Okay. So that means that N has to be greater than 11. Okay. But we might not be finished. Let's just go back and have a look because they wanted to know the smallest value of N for which Tn is smaller than negative 55, okay? Yes, Talia? We would have to equate our number to 12 because it is uh, greater than 11, because we need to find a number that will be greater than negative 55. So you exactly. need to use uh, 12 as our N. Absolutely. And a way that you can check this is through substitution. All right. So in other words, what you can do is you can go and then sub in and say to yourself, OK, well, let me work out the value of Tn. Remember, it's 25 plus n minus 1d. Now, if we put in 11, what do we get as an answer? Now, compare that, guys, to when we do what Talia suggests and we put in 12. What do we get? So when we get, when we sub an 11, you get negative 55. You get exactly negative 55, don't you? Okay, which yes, makes right. sense. All right, and then when we put in uh, 11, or oh, sorry, when we put in, all right, we get that. Okay, so they wanted to know the smallest value of n for which tn is smaller than negative 55. All right, so Talia, you are 100% correct, right? When n is equal to 11, it's exactly negative 55 
um, and we, we're not including that value. Okay, so we can't include 11. So therefore, n has to be 12. Okay, so that will be the smallest n where tn is smaller than negative 55. Okay, and of course, negative 63 is smaller than negative 55. Matrix, you are absolutely yes. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just reading your, your chats. Okay, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being such wonderful students and participating so nicely and asking us all these questions. It's really, really great. Um, we're going to have to say goodbye now because it's time for you to go and do your weekly quiz. Um, but Katlejo and I will be back at six o'clock and we will continue with some more difficult questions. So please, please, please come and join us. We absolutely love it when you're there and we can have these discussions and talk about how we're going to answer things. So I've chosen some more difficult questions. Yeah, we'll go through those later. Okay. Bye, everybody. Yes, dear Timber. Ma'am, do you guys do physics lessons? No, no, it's just maths at the moment. But you can always make the suggestion to, to Watobi. But yeah, it's okay. just maths for now. <laughs> oh, you find this is helping? Is it helping, Sia Timber? Yes, it is now. Oh, I'm so glad. That's brilliant. Okay, cool. All right. Have a great week, guys. And yeah, please come and join us uh, for the advanced lesson. Otherwise, we'll see you next week for geometry.